We're in the city of Ferrara in northern Italy, and we're standing at a busy intersection of the city today in front of this large, imposing structure that was a family palace of the Este family here in the 15th century. This intimidating structure with a facade rendered in stone cut so that it looks like the entire structure is encased in diamonds. The structure was built between 1493 and 1503, and it's known as the Palazzo dei Diamanti, the Palace of the Diamonds. And it's easy to see why as we're standing here. The two facades that are visible to us are covered in these forms that look like diamonds that project outwards. You can't even lean against the wall. And we're standing here in the morning and the sun is just hitting the facade. And it gives us this wonderful impression of what it would have looked like in its heyday. The marble that forms the diamond shapes are not just white, but there's also pink veined marble. And it has this slight glittering effect that reminds me of what a diamond is supposed to do. And this is clearly a carefully calculated effect to communicate to the people of Ferrara and any visitors to the city the magnificence of the Este family, particularly for the two brothers, Ercole de Este and his brother Sigismondo, who were of the ruling family. Ercole was Duke, and this was created for his younger brother, Sigismondo. When you get to this intersection, you can't help but notice how different it feels than the more organic or meandering streets because here at this intersection, the four streets that radiate from it are broad and straight. And in fact, the palazzo was constructed on the corner of an important intersection that was constructed under Ercole to transform the city. If we stand looking from the palazzo, we have an unobstructed view down to the castello of the Est family. So we have this visual connection between the family palace and also another structure associated with the family's power. Beginning in 1492, Ercole de Este and his architect Biagio Rossetti began the process of transforming this part of the Ferrari's territory that had previously been outside of the city center into a new addition with straight streets, imposing buildings, and structures meant to amplify the prestige of the Este family. Many scholars see this as perhaps our first example of urban planning, making Ferrara one of the first modern cities of Europe. We could also say that this is one of the first attempts at trying to replicate the humanist idea of the ideal city. So humanists at this time were interested in Greco-Roman antiquity. They're reading different architectural treatises by people like Vitruvius, and they're thinking about how to create a structured, ordered city. And we've seen art attempt to paint this in two dimensions using linear perspective or one-point perspective. Scholars and others have suggested that what Ercole was trying to do with his city planning and in conjunction with his architect Rossetti was creating this now in three dimensions in the heart of Ferrara. A city that would rival Rome in its grandeur. And as we look closely at the facade, we can see elements that recall that glorious past. There are more than 8,500 stones that form the diamonds on this structure. This all had to be imported at great cost. So Ercole de Este is looking Looking to the examples of the classical Roman past, particularly that of the Emperor Augustus, who himself said that he found Rome a city of brick and transformed it to a city of marble. Here, where stone is quite limited, the Este family is doing the same thing, but they're doing it at great cost. The facade of this massive palazzo is punctuated on both the lower and upper stories by regularly spaced windows. On the lowest level, these are topped by square plinths. On the upper level, they're topped with a triangular pediment. The whole building itself is topped with a projecting cornice. Entering into the palazzo from the main entrance requires walking through a classically styled rounded arch. And we see grotesque, or sculptures reminiscent of the paintings found in ancient Roman grottoes, decorating the structure in the engaged pilasters at all four corners. And so the use of those grotesque on these pilasters at the corners of the building and also surrounding the entryway marked certain parts of the building as more visually distinct. And that is also because they are in Istrian stone, another imported stone, but also the densest concentration of these grotesque or these more elaborate forms is on the corner, both above and below a balcony from which members of the Este family could stand and look down these four broad sweeping streets that have transformed the urban core of the city of Ferrara. 
they sort of doubled down on expressing the ownership of this structure by using the diamond motif, which was one of the symbols of the Este family and one used particularly by Sigismondo. Like in many other places in Italy during the Renaissance, we see the use of architecture in the service of those in power to advertise their wealth, to advertise their social status, and to make that clear to anyone who would be walking through the city of Ferrara. 